Finance Commissioners for the Treasury proposes the following levy amendments to meet the expenditure for the forthcoming year. Duty on spirits procured north of the Highland Line shall be increased from the current standing three shillings and eightpence per bushel to five shillings and sixpence. Distillation stills measuring less than 40 gallons will remain strictly prohibited. And ride officers deployed by customs and excise will continue to enforce this legislation. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, good man. I beg you, sir, not to waste your breath. I didn't speak a word to the Gaelic. Then we have no business together. In fact, you are not welcome here. Your name, sir? My name? Lachlan MacLeod. That's Lachlan MacLeod to you. James Stewart. Indeed. That is a remarkable name you have upon you. And what would be a gentleman as finely dressed as yourself, skating about the heather and getting yourself in the right state? It's awfully rough ground right enough. Well, maybe you'd do well to stick to the King's Highway. It's not trade, I hope. Trade? Your business. No. But I, I suppose it's trade I'm seeking. And what hae you to trade with? The coat in your back is the only thing you've got worth a look. And I suspect you may be needing that. I have money. There's only two men come here with money in their pocket. The Duke and the Excise. I've seen the Duke. And he's a mightier fine head of hair than you have. Well. I'm neither. Gagers, you're not welcome with the folks around here. I don't suppose you'll be in a position to suggest a bearing, somewhere I can find a bed for the night. You come to the glen without a place to rest your weary head. No horse or garden, though. You'd be right foolish to visit the glen unmounted. Or right smart to go undetected. Perhaps you should rethink your endeavor. I can't help you. You're a young man, you'll be all right. Well, good day to you, sir. Ah, well, perhaps it is not fitting for me to turn my back on one so helpless. Helpless? Come on, laddie. You'll be requiring a meal and a bed for the night. May the good Lord guide us safely on our way to our replenishments. You're the man of the claw. Tending the will of the good Lord in all his graciousness. Your guidance is appreciated, sir. Guidance? That is one thing. Common sense, that is another. Take a dram. You expect me to drink your spirit when you and I know fine well it was made lawlessly in the cover of night. Lawlessly? Perhaps in the cover of night? I very much doubt. Much easier to eye the proof in the daylight. In the eyes of God, he surely condemns the violation of the law. They are the laws of men. Not of God. And we are men. Men who have tended the still 
since long before you were born. If they do not wish to pay the duty, they need simply abandon their stills. So you'll not take a drum then? I'll pack the duty. Do you know, Ken, there's a war on? A war? My God, where are you in our hour of need? Do not mock me, sir. All right, then. But I stand by my conviction. I see no soldiers at my door. I hear not the thunder of cannon fire in the glen. Jacob, in the war in France! In France? Now, what would a man such as myself be doing taking an interest in a place so far away and over the water? So you object to it? The war? Hath the healing folk not given His Majesty enough? I pray you, sir. Find a family within a hundred miles of this place that have not given their sons, their brothers, to the fight. Perhaps His Majesty should try recruiting a wee bit closer to home. All that wielding of the silver knife would stand a man well in the field of battle. Treason, Minister. You hang for it. But again, that is the laws of men. Only the good Lord himself may pass judgment on me. Now, sit you down. You know I spoke only in jest. How is it with the investigation? Oh, intolerable. There's only heather and dirt in this wretched place. And did you expect to be dragging still men to the magistrates on your very first day? I believe I will be extending my stay. Of course. Years I'd wager, you'll have to be in it for a very long haul to stand any chance of catching anyone at all. I have no intention for it to take that long. But if you want a still to take back to Inverness with you, you will work for it. I want a hundred stills. <laughs> a hundred stills? You'll be older than me, my boy. But you have fire in your belly. I'll give you that. But you be cautious with it, because rage leaves an awful bitter taste. <sighs> now, the morrow. It is the Sabbath day. A day of rest for all, it seems. But the gauger. Here in Durk it is, okay, Marenum. Oiche, agus biet am fesker agus an vati an kiet la. Agus horstje viag aha am meen an uskuchen. Agus korige jalethag et a uskuchen agus uskuchen. Agus rainjia an taha. Agus chori dialachag eitr na hoeskichen a va faun aha. Agus na hoeskichen a va skiun an aha. Agus va e mar sien. Agus hoogtia mar eno meer an aha neer. Agus biet am fesker agus a vati an garo. Agus hoeskia. It 
was a fine sermon, Minister. You have a way with words. You have not a word of the Gaelic yet. I can see the people don't look fondly upon me. And why would they? You are a stranger on a warpath. I did not see the Duke. <laughs> why would you? Is he not a believer? Oh, that is between him and God. So he comes only to collect his rent. The agent comes, aye. And to collect his spirit. It is one thing sticking your nose in our business. Quite another sticking your nose in the Duke's. But he does drink the Petrick. How would I know what he drinks? It looks to me like he has other interests to pursue rather than enforce the excise. And show me a man who does not. Yeah, with the obvious exception, of course. Insult me at your leisure, but there is no honor in evasion. Oh, but there is honor in confiscation and honor in impoverishment. So you condone the practice? Does that make me a guilty man. It would make me question your integrity. So, I should keep my parishioners from the still? Of course. Shames, you cannot prevent a man from feeding himself. And what do you expect a man to be doing if he is not attending to his still? Dodging the excise? Aye, that is an occupation in itself. But it's the drink in his anchors that provides for his wife and for his bairns. If he cannot be doing that, how will he make himself a shilling? The Duke would not be best pleased if he was not to receive his rents. And the Duke with no rents? How is he to maintain his residence, his servants' quarters, his light, his fire? And without those things, where is he to take his rest, and enjoy his petrique. I'm sure the Duke would cope perfectly well. It is an unremarkable existence here, in the wind and in the rain. Why do you insist on taking the color from already drab lives? Good evening. Mr. Stewart, this is Malcolm Robertson. James Stewart, you're a gauger. An officer of the excise, so you're a vile cheat. Malcolm! Are you insane, man? Hath the deal shown his wicked face and tugged you sour? Malcolm, another time. I beg you, man, away to your bed. His beak wash. I'll hae nae worries when there ain't nae bastard gauger a hundred miles from my Petrick. I'll hae nae worries when he is kicking at the end of a rope. Malcolm, it is the Sabbath day. It is not fit for me to turn any man from my door. You can for your loyalty's lie, Minister. With the good Lord himself. Well, I'll be a while afore my purse is purged. He'll talk everything you have, Minister. <sighs> James, I beg you, man, do not act in haste. Pray you, my boy, do not seek a fight. 
I fear you may find one. Perhaps I'm not so helpless. Minister. James! The Lord's grace and my assistance end at this door. Excise. You're under arrest for charges of illicit distillation, smuggling of illegal contraband, and avoidance of the tax. There must be some sort of mistake, Mr. Stewart. I have no petri. Then what fine elixir draws the sweat to your brow? Holy water. Perhaps the Lord will send you some if you allow it passage unhindered. There ain't nothing holy in there. You can leave it lashed. It is now property of the excise. From the looks of them scrawny arms, you'll be needing an army to help haul it away. But I didn't see it. Stand back, sir, before you do yourself a mischief. You came armed, Gager. By order of the excise, I demand that you stand back. Gager. Gager. Do not worsen your plight, still man. Caught with a Petrig. It looks like there's plenty of trouble already. How do you know where I was? Oh, I found you. Malcolm told you. And it was by the grace of God that he did so. He took my pistol. You held it to the man's chest. I'll have that man in chains. If not a casket. You have your integrity. Keep it that way. I suppose I should turn the other cheek. That is a choice that we all have. Where is Malcolm hiding in the still, Lachlan? Where is Malcolm's still? I know you've been helping him. You've got him at your bosom. I wouldn't be surprised if there's contraband spilling out of every nook and cranny in this godforsaken house. Easy there, my boy. What difference would it possibly make? Were I to say anything at all, a drop in the ocean. So our trust is broke. I could hold you in contempt. Deforcement. Disrupting the duties of His Majesty's excise officer. You never did trust me, James. Nor do you trust anyone in this village. 
and that is why, like the others sent before you, you have already failed. I've only just begun. And yet, your fate is certain. Where are we going, Lachlan? Are you avenged, James? You think I take pleasure in this? This is not justice, Lachlan. And yet, your aggressor is dead. Justice has prevailed. This sinner's debt is settled. For a secret still sight, we found our way here remarkably easy, Lachlan. Lose your tongue, lad. Let your mind be clear. As you wish, Minister. As an officer of the excise, it is my duty to inform you that I have accumulated sufficient evidence to place you under arrest, Minister, on charges of aiding and abetting, illegal distillation, tax avoidance, and smuggling. And what sentence would you have upon me? You lied straight to my face. We sat in your home and you fed me half-truths without a quiver in your voice. Aye, I fed you right enough. <sighs> so you're admonished. I told you before, Seamus. Only the good Lord will pass judgment upon me. Mm -hmm. 